进入蓝牙，等待连接。And that is how you know you bought a Chinese amplifier. Hi all, Messbound Cup from Casa Power Electronics here. I was rather disappointed in the two times fifty watt、uh, amplifier that I bought and that you saw a couple of videos back. So I bought another and also a very cheap、uh, Bluetooth enabled、uh, single chip amplifier. Now this cost me eight point twenty seven British pound, so that is somewhere around maybe ten US dollar. Now this、uh, uses the TDA seventy four ninety eight class D chip, and it is advertised as two times hundred watt. So、um, let's just、uh, take a look at the pictures here, and we can see that it is a little more simplistic、uh, built than the、uh, previous one. Also, this does not have any push buttons、um, to、uh, operate your audio device over the Bluetooth. So this can only have a、uh, cabled、uh, connection. A TF card has a volume uh, button, um, which I think I prefer to the、um, yeah software that didn't really work on the other unit.、Um, as we can also see here, the Bluetooth IC and antenna are now integrated in the PCB. The other had a module. Glued on、um, for that. The data sheet for the Class D、uh, amplifier chip here. We can see it is actually rated for 100 watt. So at least they do not over advertise、uh, this amplifier.、Um, we can see that is 100 watt at a THD at 10% into 6 ohm. Now I'm more interested in the 8 ohm and some preferably a THD around 1% or less. So let's scroll down and see、uh, the absolute maximum ratings at page eight, and then page fourteen for the eight ohm ratings. So it's rated for a maximum of forty-five volt DC. I will probably operate this as、uh, at twenty、uh, volt DC due to yeah having a lot of twenty volt、uh, laptop chargers I could use for this. So let's、uh, go straight to page fourteen. This is the envelope the amplifier came in.、Uh, it's just a regular, very thinly patent, all burst, actually bursted、um, bubble wrap. So a bit disappointing to see a amplifier come in that. We can also see that how the PCB have made marks through the anti-static bag here. At least it's、uh, in an anti-static bag. It does not say much interesting. Just names the chip. So the board layout itself: we have the power supply rails, inductors, etc., close around the chip. A lot of、uh, filtering、um, for the different inputs to the chip. The volume、uh, potentiometer that is a regular analog, so that will actually actually remember the、uh, volume setting. A small、uh, knob. For the、um, volume control, overall soldering quality. It's a little bit over here at the TF card、uh, reader. A lot of flux, but overall、uh, soldering seems、uh, good. And not much to say about the、uh, underside here, except that the soldering is actually perfect here. So no、um, no critique there. So I'm just going to find out what the small IC do we have controlling the、uh, Bluetooth and with that little、uh, crystal there, and then let's go test it out.
The amplifier now sits at the test bench. Uh, I have it connected up to 20 volt DC on this uh, variable power, power supply. I have a input from my audio analyzer, output to the uh, dummy load over there, 8 ohm, uh, connected up to the audio analyzer sitting up here. And that is run by this piece of uh, Python software. Uh, you can find a link to this uh, in the description to the video if you want to experiment with this yourself via a USB to GPIP converter. So let's um, try to do a frequency response test. This will be uh, 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz, 10 steps per decade, and at 0 0.5 volt RMS. It's no shame to see such a nice measurement done twice. So you can see uh, via the GPIP interface uh, I have automated these tests on that rather old HP 8903A audio analyzer. So if we just quickly take a look um, here at 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, that's where it really starts to uh, rise up. And we quickly change over to the frequency response in the datasheet for 8 ohm. And we can see at 2 kilohertz, this is where it starts climbing. So it actually matches the frequency response of the datasheet. Before we can look at the THD curves, um, we have to do a power measurement on the amplifier. So here I did a output level measurement um, and as we can see at the input level of uh, 0 0.5 volts we are at 2.9 volt uh, output um, in output level. So if we switch back over here and we say we have 2.9 volts divided by 8 ohm and times 2.9 volt we have 1 watt. And uh, one watt output power is important because this is what most data sheets give up their frequency response curve at the THD end. Uh, now you can also have it uh, versus the output power, but we can see that this is just a single measurement at 100 hertz and 1 kilohertz. And we can see that it goes up drastically after uh, yeah, 20, 30, at 50 watt, a 40 watt. Um, but down here, uh, we can see that it's at maximum 0 0.2, but that's only above 1 to, to 2 kilohertz. So you can see it's in very favor of the manufacturer of this chip to only show you the curves for up to 1 kilohertz. And that is why you also see the um, output power, uh, where you have the full DC input range versus the full output power of the amplifier, that it's rated at 10% THD. So let's do some THD measurements at 1 watt and see if it resembles this graph. So we switch over to do a THD plus N measurement. Again done at uh, 30, uh, 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz, 10 steps per decade at 0 0.5 volt RMS. Starts out slowly at 0.7% uh, THD. Drops down around the 0 0.5. Okay, big jump up at around 200 hertz. But we are still in the range of 0.2% here. And I must say that the uh, the accuracy of my audio analyzer is probably around 0.2% THD anyway, so... One of the best things about audio testing is listening to these 5 to 20 kilohertz tones. 
So we can see here at 20 kilohertz, we are actually up around, yeah, at least 0.5% above um, the baseline. So if we just try to remember this, down at a small hill, flat, and then up again. And see, it's not quite the curve we see here. But also we have a higher noise level and certainly a higher base floor um, than they have measured in this data sheet. I can of course uh, say that it could be my audio analyzer that has uh, a higher noise floor than a modern analyzer they have used for this. But I would also say that these curves are under extremely optimal conditions where the chip is actually yeah, centered all around the um, a specialized power supply and very specialized measurement equipment as to uh, minimize all influences and the uh, noise um, noise sources so this is really the optimum you can get from the chip sitting as a device under test where we have this sitting on a table like this with a cables going everywhere and a board probably not that great and uh, optimized this is more like the reality we see. And this is also not that bad at one watt for a class D amplifier at, yeah, $10. Here I'm going to the repeat the THD uh, test at eight watt instead of one watt. And we can suddenly see at just 8 watt, where the data sheet is rated for 10 watt, uh, that the 10% THD, we are already over double of that. And now we get to see some climbing. So a THD topping up at around 33%, just out at some 18 kilohertz. There, yeah, that's pretty bad. And we can't even find a graph here showing that because no manufacturer would want to show a... Out in the workshop, the same hi-fi wire bundle as last time. The same old speakers. Now let's try to turn it on. Yeah. And that is how you know you bought a Chinese amplifier. As we can hear, it, it does have some, uh, some uh, noise issues with picking up noise. Maybe it will get better with a grounded uh, chassis. I don't know, maybe not. But um, let's just try to uh, plug in the SD card, or the TF card here. Uh, it contains a royalty-free song made by my uh, good friend uh, Mikas, especially for me, so I can use it all I want in my channel. Okay. Now that's a whole other sound quality than uh, I had last time with the uh, other smaller amplifier. This actually sounds good. So, uh, as you can probably see here, there is no markings on the um, ICs uh, to be seen. Just turn down the sound a bit. That the, the markings of the ICs are actually non-existent. I had this under my microscope, as you can see on these close-up photos that I overlay on the video, and there is absolutely nothing. But it does work so good that if you plug in a RX cable, it will play that. If you plug in a TF card with MP3 files, it will play that. If you do not connect a Bluetooth device, which has priority over the two other lines. 
So, uh, with uh, some uh, thermal pictures of this unit uh, taken after the uh, bench testing, I will just uh, do a out outro with some more of Mikasa's music.